While most automakers were still playing catch-up, trying to lower the cost of their electric vehicles with lithium iron phosphate cells imported from China, Tesla decided to change the entire game in 2026. It wasn't just another bold move by Elon Musk. It was a strategic, carefully calculated counterattack that surprised even the most skeptical engineers. The new aluminum ion battery, previously restricted to experimental labs and silent prototypes, finally arrived in the Model 2 with a bold proposition. Faster acceleration, charging in minutes, and lower cost. Yes, lower. And that, in the world of popular electric vehicles, is a game changer. While the world was obsessed with the price of lithium, Tesla engineers delved into a forgotten abundance. Aluminum. Present everywhere, lightweight, cheap, and stable. The most common metal in the Earth's crust became the protagonist of an energy revolution. Unlike LFP cells that saturate at low density, Musk's new chemistry yielded encouraging numbers, 185 to 210 Dwaridi Wank, in a compact model that was already optimized for efficiency from the start. And the best part? Each vehicle could cost up to $700 less just by changing the chemistry. In a market where every penny counts, this became a powerful weapon. Tesla cars have always carried a futuristic image, but with the 2026 Model 2, that image finally gained substance on a mass scale. Aluminum ion technology wasn't just there to compete with China. It was there to show that it's possible to turn the tables. And all this without depending on a single gram of cobalt, nickel, or graphite, the elements that have most inflated fuel cell costs in the last five years. It was as if Musk said, you want efficiency, speed, and price? Then sit down, because here comes a story. In practice, the impact is direct. With less weight in the battery, the car responds faster. With higher energy density, the range becomes more stable. And with fewer critical metals, production becomes cleaner and less hostage to market fluctuations. Tesla not only repositioned itself in the electric vehicle race, it practically changed the type of track. While others debated which LFP cell was the least bad, Elon Musk bet on a different periodic table. And he was right. Some called it madness at first. After all, the idea of replacing lithium, the darling of the past decade, with aluminum seemed like a leap without a safety net. But when the first laboratory results showed absurdly fast charging cycles and promising thermal stability, the tone changed. It was no longer if it would work. It was when it would hit the streets. And 2026 became that when. Now, there's no going back. Aluminum ion is real. And it's under the hood. The biggest surprise was seeing how Tesla managed to reconfigure the entire production chain for this shift. From the cell design to the pack design, everything was redesigned. And the most impressive thing? All this without increasing the final vehicle price. In fact, quite the opposite. This new generation of batteries is not only faster and lighter, but also cheaper to manufacture. This opened up space for something that many people thought impossible. A Tesla electric car under $25,000 with decent range and respectable performance. Nobody believed this would be possible so soon, but 2026 arrived and brought with it one of Tesla's most anticipated and underestimated technological leaps, charging in less than 10 minutes. That's right, an electric car with decent range, an affordable price, and that charges faster than many people take to grab a coffee on the road. It's surreal to think that, until last year, 30 minutes was the standard for charging a basic car from 10% to 80%. Now, the Model 2, with its aluminum ion battery, does it in 9, maybe even 8 minutes, depending on the charging station. It's a whole new level. And it's no exaggeration to say that this completely changes the way people drive. The secret lies in peak charging. While previous models used charging stations limited to 250 kilodrev, Tesla has prepared the ground for a new level of power. Sessions with aluminum-ion batteries can require momentary peaks of up to 350 kilodrev 
And that's for an entry-level car. You can imagine the challenge. Older superchargers can't handle that kind of load. So began a silent race to adapt the network. With thicker cables, liquid cooling, more powerful rectifiers, and energy buffers installed near major charging centers. And yes, of course Tesla was planning this well before the official announcement. The most interesting thing is that, although it seems like a convenience improvement, this technical advancement hits a sensitive point for millions of drivers. Time. Before, it was common to plan long stops, thinking about lunch or a walk while the car recharged. Now, the brakes are almost the size of a pit stop especially for the over 50s, which, according to Tesla itself, represents a good portion of the Model 2 Clilito 2TD 2 Luclantiso, this change is significant. No one needs to wait inside the car anymore. A coffee, a trip to the bathroom, and that's it. The car is full again. The impact of this on long journeys is more profound than it seems. Many people were hesitant to take EVs on the road because of charging times. With a maximum of 10 minutes, that concern disappears. Total range is still important, of course, but now the focus shifts. What matters is the frequency and speed of stops. It's a silent transformation in driver behavior. That anxiety that made some hesitate to switch to an electric vehicle simply vanishes. The car is always ready, always charged, and almost never stopped. But this technical miracle comes at a price, not in money, but in engineering. To achieve these peak charging speeds, the battery's thermal management system needs to be almost surgical. Every second counts. Tesla invested in a new type of cooling with internal channels, microplates, and sensors that monitor each cell individually during charging. It's as if the car is being cared for by an army of invisible technicians every time it connects to a supercharger. Nothing is left to chance. This precision isn't just for safety. It also ensures that battery performance remains high even after hundreds of fast cycles. The biggest fear was precisely this. Will the battery be able to charge so fast for so long? Tesla's initial answers are optimistic. The system adapts, slightly reducing the speed when it detects wear, and activates thermal protection modes in very hot environments. All automatic, all invisible to the driver, and all designed to ensure that this ultra-fast charging continues to be a differentiating factor for many years to come. Charging an electric car in under 10 minutes sounds like science fiction, but in 2026, it became a reality, and with that came new challenges. The aluminum ion battery, despite all its advantages, isn't exactly an easy tool to handle. It charges quickly, delivers high power, is lighter, but it also heats up like an oven when pushed to its limits. And that's where what many people don't see comes in. The silent work of Tesla engineers to tame the heat before it becomes a serious problem. Because keeping a battery stable during extreme loads is almost like trying to cool down a pressure cooker in the middle of the desert. When Tesla realized that the internal temperatures of the new battery could exceed 44 for degrees during intense charging sessions, the red alert went off. If the heat wasn't precisely controlled, the risk was real. Accelerated degradation, loss of efficiency, and of course, compromised safety. That's when engineering went into millimeter hunting mode. They began redesigning everything from the thermal plate to the material used in the internal interfaces. Nothing could escape review. The mission was simple to say, but complex to execute. Keep the battery temperature between 29 degrees C and 44 degrees at all times, even on the hottest days in Texas or Arizona. To achieve this, Tesla opted for a cooling system that looks like something out of a futuristic movie. Instead of thick tubes and simple fans, they created a two-layer system with micro-channels of fluid that circulate like blood vessels in an artificial skin. Each channel removes heat from specific points in the battery in real time, adjusting the fluid speed and internal pressure depending on the applied load. It's practically a living organism inside the car taking care of the battery as if it were the vehicle's brain. 
and all this happens silently, without the driver noticing. But the heat doesn't just come from fast charging. The internal structure of the cell also has an influence. Aluminum ion, unlike lithium, has more aggressive reactions when subjected to current peaks. This means that the design of the cells themselves had to change. The inner layers were compressed, the electrodes were given optimized spacing, and even the insulating material between the cells was redesigned with thermal dissipation properties. Nothing remained the same. And Tesla didn't just make it work in the lab, it put this system inside an affordable mass-produced car. Of course, there was test after test. Model 2 prototypes were placed in thermal tunnels, extreme heat simulation chambers, and even in closed circuits where they repeated charging cycles 300 times a month. The goal was to understand where the battery would fail, not where it shone. And by identifying the weak points, Tesla created thermal control algorithms capable of predicting in advance when the cell is about to reach a danger zone. These algorithms are updated via software and can even adapt to the driver's usage profile. It's as if the car knows your habits and protects itself based on that. One little discussed detail is how cooling also affects on-road performance. With controlled temperatures, power peaks become more consistent. There's no longer that feeling of the car losing breath after a period of heavy use. Under ideal conditions, the battery delivers everything it can, without hesitation. This directly impacts acceleration, overtaking, and even efficiency on inclines. It seems small, but adding these effects together, the experience of driving a Tesla with an aluminum ion battery is simply more fluid, more solid, more predictable. If the aluminum ion battery seemed difficult to produce, Elon Musk decided to prove otherwise in 2026. While many analysts were still debating whether this technology was viable on a large scale, Tesla already had its hands dirty with replaced graphene and production lines adapted to a new format, the 4080. Yes, narrower than the famous 4680, but absurdly more efficient for the new type of cell. And it wasn't just a matter of changing the shape. The entire supply chain, the cell design, and even the humidity control systems had to be reinvented from scratch. Because mass-producing aluminum ion wasn't just about pressing a new button, it was about building a new industrial logic. The first change began where no one sees it, in the electrode layer. Aluminum ion requires a greater thickness and does not tolerate graphite. This changes everything. Tesla's electrode line, which previously worked with lithium slurries, had to be redesigned with a completely new dry deposition process. Furthermore, aluminum requires an ultra-low humidity environment to maintain electrolyte stability. The result? The gigafactories gained even more rigorous clean rooms, almost to the standard of the pharmaceutical industry. Every centimeter of production now depends on high-precision environmental control, and this increases costs. But Tesla compensated with cycle agility and fewer steps. The new 4080 form factor was carefully chosen. By reducing the cell diameter, the thermal path became shorter, which aids in heat dissipation, as we saw earlier but also made it easier to pack the cells into the smaller Model 2. Lorry 2 packs. Assembly became faster, lighter, and more flexible. And here's an interesting detail. Aluminum ion has a much higher electrolyte injection rate than lithium. This shortens the manufacturing time per cell by up to 55 seconds. Multiply that by millions of cells per year, and the result is faster production without sacrificing quality. Tesla didn't stop there. To ensure redundancy and adaptability during the transition between chemistries, it set up hybrid lines in its Nevada and Shanghai factories. These lines can produce both 4680 and 4080 cells, switching according to demand or material availability. An intelligent module reconfiguration system allows the same conveyor belt to manufacture two types of cells with automatic adjustments. This reduces the risk of bottlenecks and increases flexibility in the face of market uncertainties, a clever move that few automakers have the courage or competence to attempt. 
Yes, production in 2026 is already underway with ambitious numbers. Pilot lines delivered between 8 and 12 GWs by the end of 2025, and current projections indicate that Tesla could reach up to 45 GU by December 2026. This would be enough to power between 750,000 and 900,000 Model 2 units, provided the efficiency rate exceeds 85%. And that's the critical part. Tesla has struggled in the past with the early years of 4680 cells, when waste was high and production inconsistent. Now, with aluminum ion, it seems they have learned their lesson. Cycle time is shorter, fault control is more precise, and the use of abundant materials reduces the impact of losses. Of course, the success of this production also depends on suppliers. Aluminum is easy to find, but the electrolyte and sealing materials still require strategic partnerships. Tesla has closed deals with research centers in Australia and suppliers in the US to guarantee autonomy and avoid dependence on Asian supply chains. This not only reduces logistical costs, but also strengthens Tesla's image as a made-in-America company, something important in times of tariffs and trade tensions. And when it comes to large-scale electrification, every second of productive autonomy counts. Everyone loves impressive charging numbers and promises of low cost, but when the car is yours and you're going to drive it for years, a question quickly arises. Does this battery really last? That's where one of the most delicate issues of Tesla's new generation of aluminum ion batteries comes in. In 2026, with the Model 2 already on the streets, the first real-world tests began to confirm something many people suspected. Yes, it lasts well, but not as long as LFP batteries. On paper, the number is staggering. 1,800 charge cycles to 80% capacity versus 2,500 cycles for LFP batteries. But hold on, there's an important detail hidden there, and that's what changes the game. To better understand, just think about the driver's behavior. The aluminum ion battery charges in nine minutes. Charges in nine minutes. This means that, in practice, you spend less time plugged in and put less stress on the cell. If before you thought about charging from 10% to 90% every time, now the impulse is to stop quickly charge to 60 or 70% and continue the journey. Less deep charging, less internal heat, less wear and tear. In other words, those 1-800 cycles aren't 1-800 aging cycles, but rather milestones that are reached much more slowly because real world use is lighter than in laboratory tests. And Tesla knew this. The internal battery management algorithms were adjusted to further soften the impact of fast charging cycles. The software learns from the owner's behavior. If you always charge between 30 and 80 percent, the system begins to adapt internal parameters to protect the cells. It reduces peak current, controls temperature more carefully, and even modulates regeneration during hard braking. All this to preserve battery health without you having to think about it. The car takes care of itself. And this, in 2026, became the new normal. Of course, in extreme scenarios, the difference in durability can be significant. Drivers who travel a lot make dozens of fast recharges per month or live in very hot regions will reach the degradation phase sooner. But even in these cases, the initial data is promising. Tesla estimates that cars with aluminum ion batteries 